<laughs> well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in, uh, well, it's been rainy and foggy, California. Um, come to you today with some very good news. Um, we were able to sort out the firewall problem we had. And yes, it was a firewall problem, sort of, but we don't know why it was a firewall problem. So let me give you a rundown again real quick of what the problem was. Uh, I've made a little drawing up here because I don't want to show you my internal network. So here was the deal. We have a company that we contract with. They have a web server out here at their location across the internet. Um, I'm using phony baloney uh, addresses to uh, protect the innocent. Um, Yes, I know that's in the Google's namespace, but it's something I could pick out real quick. So not an actual IP address. Well, it probably is, but it's not their actual IP address. Um, so our users, which, uh, you know, I didn't draw that. I probably should. Anyway, our users hang off the core, our core network here somewhere in our, in our network. They're in here somewhere. So they go to this web server out here. To get there, they go through our fire, firewall, across a VPN tunnel, and to them. That was working, no problem. They could get to that web page. Now, to log into that web page, they had to uh, enter their user credentials um, from our network, basically. So this guy would come back across the tunnel to this LDAP server over here, and try to authenticate the users. That was what was not happening. So if I get on this server here, I could ping their server, no problem. I could do a trace route. It got there within a few hops. It got there within four hops. So go one, two, three, four. That's the hops it took. And you kind of have to understand a little bit about how our, our network works, the way we do things. So we have, Everybody's dumped into buckets called VRFs. We got a user's VRF, server's VRF, uh, IoT, VoIP, and sir, something. Oh, I can't remember what it is. We got five of them anyway, and one's a test. Um, so this guy is in the server's VRF. So to get anywhere that's not, he can talk to anything else in the server's VRF, no problem. So he can talk server to server, doesn't have to go through any kind of routing, whatever. If he does, um, he doesn't know how to get there. So he goes back to the core and the core says, well, I don't know how to get there either. So it sends it to this firewall. Um, we call this our segmentation firewall. So this, this firewall here does all the um, inter VRF routing. So to get from the server's VRF to the user's VRF or users to servers, you got to come through this firewall here. And that's all he does is route traffic from one VRF to the next and then looks for nasties and malware and that kind of stuff. Um, so, okay, he gets here. No problem. He says, I don't know where that is. I'm going to route you out to the internet. So goes out here to the firewall. This guy says, oh, I know where you live. I send you out here. So that's how the routing works. So here's the weird thing. When these guys would ping back to this server, uh, they might get a reply, they might not. When they would do a trace route, it would trace, it would, the trace route would work. It'd get about to hop 12 and then it would show up this guy. But then the trace route would continue and just do timeouts. Well, if you got here, well, why are you continuing? So, and that was from their perspective. That was from uh, when they uh, did a trace route from their web server. That's the results they were getting. We did a trace route back to them, no problem. So what would cause, <laughs> what would cause pings and trace put routes to work reliably in this direction? Sorry, reliably in this direction but unreliably back in this direction. And 
LDAP lookups to fail completely, just not working. What do the firewall logs show? Firewall logs show traffic coming from them being allowed by this firewall and passing through this firewall and getting to this. We would see the traffic getting there, but then it just wouldn't go back. We 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 couldn't find it back here. We couldn't. Find, why couldn't? But but when we ping from there, it goes right through. The, go, right now, it works. Oh my goodness! What a mess. So, uh, okay, I figured. All right, we we had we had all kinds of helpful suggestions. Everything from let me set you guys down so you're not like right in my face. There you go. This is live, folks. Live and unscripted. And I need a better tripod. Um, and I will get one, probably, because he, uh, YouTube's, I guess, letting me actually make money off of this. So, sorry. Sorry about this, this uh, brief interlude here. It shows you. <laughs> it's all unscripted, folks. It's all off the cuff. So anyway, back to what I was talking about. So what would what would cause this? So um, to work to as a workaround, what we did is or what we asked the vendor to do is set up local accounts on this web server because our users could get there reliably and get to their web page reliably. It was just them coming back. Now what in the heck could that be? So I started, um, all right, yeah, we had every, every suggestion from asymmetric routing to, um, yeah, what was the other one? Oh, the, yeah, the, the woman from, from the network admin gal from this company just kept saying, you've got a server problem. You've got a server problem. Every time we've seen this, it's a server problem. It was not a server problem. Um, asymmetric routing, kind of but not really. Um, routing problem, definitely, but not in my core. Not with this firewall, not with the server. There was a routing problem and it was being caused by our edge firewall and I'll explain. So we, we, when you set up rules, especially for people coming in, um, these guys have the same internal um, IP address space as we do. Um, we use a 10 network. Everybody in the world, you know, large corporations will use 10 dot whatever on their internal networks and then use network address tr translations when, once they get out to the internet. Um, so we have to set up these things called NAT rules. So here's the, let me fold this up so you don't get ahead of me here. All right. So here, here's our NAT policy. So what we're basically saying is, hey, um, anything that's coming from 8.8.8.8 to 9.9.9.1, okay, 8.8.8.1 is their web server. <laughs> it's, it's right over there. Um, 9.9.9.1, again, not the actual IP address, um, this is just a, a, an address we said, okay, when you're coming to our internal LDAP server, point it to this thing. So they, okay, and then they set up a route on their end, say 9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.9.
8.8.8.1. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess we could have set it up that way. I didn't set this up. Our, our old firewall admin did. Remember, gorgeous network admin boss? Um, she set this up. So, okay. Here's the problem with that 10.1.254.50. Here's where the routing issue comes in. So remember how I talked about the VRFs and to get from the server's VRF to the user's VRF, we have to route through this, this segmentation firewall. The connections between the core and the firewall and the edge firewall, because it's got another one of these ad addresses and all the VRFs, they're in this 10.1.254 address space so to when this guy was seeing the active directory authentication traffic coming from him it's coming through here it was appearing to come from 10.1.254.20 so when he would send the data back it would get into the core and the pan firewall and says hey send me to 10.1.254.20 and it didn't know where to send it. I don't know where it was sending it. I never could figure it out. It wasn't sending it back out. Um, so I started thinking, well, maybe I can add a route for you know 10.1.254, like an exception route that'll point it back to here. And I thought, eh, wait, wait, mm, uh, I don't want to mess with the routing to fix one workflow. So what did I do to fix it? Well, let's come back here to the, the phony baloney firewall configurations. So you remember, we were using a source net of uh and that's this source net was was is configured right here and that's the actual value of it um what i did is change fold this better sorry guys it's not that good of a storyteller um what i basically did was change bleeding through there um i set the uh trans the source address translation i basically got rid of it you know i said nope nope we're not gonna do any source uh, address translation um i forgot to write it in there but basically we said just go to you know um what was it just go to 10.1.1.20 which should be right there. Um, so got rid of that. So we went from this, you see that source IP, to this. Is it? Yeah, no source IP. And I really hope that isn't backwards for you guys. It looks backwards to me, but hopefully not. Anyway, so took that out. And then what do you know? We did the packet captures over here. The authentication traffic from them now appeared to be coming from 8.8.8.1. He knows how to get to 8.8.8.1. He didn't know how to get to 10.1.254.20. So, boom, it just started working. Um, authentication traffic would show up from 8.8.8.1. Well, actually, yeah, that's what it was showing up as. He says, okay. Um, I'm going to send it back to you. It goes back to my core, says 8.8.8.1. That's not mine. I'm going to send another VRF. Goes to this guy. He says, I don't know where it is. I'm going to send it to the edge firewall. Edge firewall gets it, goes 8.8.8.1. I know where that is. Out it goes out the tunnel. And that is what solved the, uh, the crazy issue. Um, how was it ever working in the first place? I don't know. It should not have been. Um, I had a call with the, the head of our county's IT. Um, so we're, we're a county, we're a hospital, we're a county hospital. We're a department within the a county, just like the sheriff's department, just like you know any other department in the county. We're, we're a department of the county. And so he's head of IT over the county. Yeah, pretty smart guy. 
And uh, so I was talking to him about it, explaining to him the problem. Now, by this time, mind you, I'd already solved the problem. So um, I made this appointment with him before I had solved the problem and I was pulling my hair out over it. And I don't have much hair to pull. Um, so I was talking to him and explaining to him what I found and what I did. And uh, after telling me how messy my firewall was, thank you, Gurji, um, he agreed. He said, hey, there's no way that that could ever have worked. Um, he said, either A, it was a glitch, and it was, it was working as a glitch, and should not have been working, or B, um, they fixed something on the other side. And it's too coincidental. I mean, as soon as I deleted that source NAT, out of the network address translation policy, everything started working great. So, and he agreed there's no reason to have a source NAT for that because, you know, they're coming in from an address that's not on my network. So what, who cares? It's gonna go back out. Well, why do we need to, to do translation on it? So I don't know what the uh, beautiful network admin boss was thinking when she, she did it, but um, she obviously had a reason um, and it worked at the time. It worked all the way up until last Monday when it just stopped working. So that part's a mystery. And so, um, yeah. And another mystery that happened right in the middle of this, which is what was driving me crazy, was my core, was my management network bouncing up and down. And <laughs> we, we solved that one too. Um, it turns out that one was caused by a loop created by the help desk when they were moving users and furniture around and forgot where things were plugged in and accidentally created a loop. And uh, the loop stopped when they got frustrated that their <laughs> stuff wasn't working, so they just unplugged everything and was going to wait to talk to me about it. That's when the, the, the switches stopped bouncing up and down. So, um, I got a ticket in with Extreme to double check my um, spanning tree and loop prevention protocols on that edge switch out there. So it looks like everything's set up right, but something, I mean, it should have caught it, it should have gone down like right now, and it didn't. So we'll have to figure that one out. But anyway, yeah, the, the main big mystery is solved. Yesterday they rolled everything back. They they tore down the local authentication on that. Went back to LDAP authentication on our server, and uh, reported everything's working great. So you don't know what a load off my mind that is. So anyway, I'm not as smart as you guys all think I am, but I mean at least I did I did figure this one out with God's help. Uh, that's what we always say at our church. I will God helping me. So. That's all I got for this week. Um, for all you guys that were throwing out suggestions, I really appreciate it. Um, some of you are on the right track. Um, I, I can tell there's a couple of firewall guys out there, so I really appreciate those suggestions. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. So if you like what you saw, click the subscribe button. Hopefully my uh, mellifluous voice hasn't put you to sleep by now. Uh, click the like button if you like the video. Keep those uh, comments and prayer requests coming. And uh, we'll catch you guys all next week. God bless.